What's up, Prize Five fans? I'm Brian Tong, and the smartphone season is getting hot and heavy, so we're bringing in a new contender. It's a Prize Five punch out between the HTC One and Apple's iPhone Five. Our judges for this fight are senior editor Jessica, the People's Dole Court, senior editor Brian, who Shakalaka Bennett, and myself, can't go wrong, Tom. Now we'll take all three judges' scores and average them out to the nearest tenth each round. The final prize fight score will be an average of all rounds using the same system. Let's get it started. Round one is designed. The HTC One is a really unique piece of beauty with its contoured aluminum body, polished metal edges and the highest build quality on an Android phone we've ever seen. And let's not forget about its 4.7 inch screen with super sharp 468 pixels per inch. Now Apple's iPhone 5 design was one of their best ever, but it's not the best anymore. It still looks great, but the industry copycats have made this design stale and its four inch retina display looks like a shrimp with its pedestrian 326 pixels per inch that's still thinner and lighter than the HTC One. You might call it the one that took down the iPhone, and HTC does it with a perfect five, and the iPhone 5 gets a four. Next round is user interface and controls. HTC brings their next generation of its Sense UI that runs on top of Android Jelly Bean, and it's a clean and easy to operate experience for an Android device. Now a new feature is the Blink feed that shows you all your social media updates, and if you like it, it's nice, but if you don't, there's no way to hide it or get rid of it, and it lives as one of your main home panels. Now you'll still get all of Android's customizations for creating folders and widgets, and the notifications pulldown is still right where you expect it. Now Apple's iOS is still the easiest OS hands down, and there's no surprises here. It's intuitive enough for kids and adults. You can create your own folders, but there's little to no customization. It's ease of use versus customization, but really it comes down to what you want, and we don't all agree here, and the iPhone takes round two with the 4.7, and the HTC One gets a 4.3. So after averaging two rounds, the HTC One leads, next round is features. I don't think we really have a list long enough for everything the HTC One brings, but guess what, I'll try. Now it starts with its blazing quad-core 1.7 gigahertz processor. Its power button doubles as an IR blaster to use your phone as a TV remote. HTC brings what they call boom sound with dual frontal stereo speakers that sound better than anything I've heard on a phone so far. Then let's just add on all the Android Jelly Bean features like Google Maps for the best maps with turn by turn and speech to text for search and directions. There's NFC for sending content from one phone to the other, and Google Now for happenings around you. Now their single piece aluminum body design means no removable battery and no expandable memory, but guess what? You might not care. Now Apple's iPhone 5 brings a dual core A6 processor that's fast and snappy, and Siri can do more with sports, movies, and food recommendations. But it's still not as accurate, and it still takes way too long to get information back from its servers. Apple Maps is more than a step behind Google Maps right now, and Passbook still remains rarely used, and the phone doesn't have any kind of built-in NFC. Can you guys guess who takes this round? It's the HTC One with another perfect five, and the iPhone gets a 4.3. Next round is web browsing and multimedia. The HTC One comes preloaded with Chrome and the default browser with flash support. Now we'll take Chrome as one of the best mobile browsers with incognito mode, synced bookmarks, and a sweet tabbed interface. Apple brings Safari, which is also an excellent mobile browser, but you can install Chrome and others on the iPhone as well. Now most of the time with multimedia, people want to know about the cameras, and the HTC One takes a different approach with a four megapixel camera, but they call it an ultra pixel that's able to gather more information and handle lighting situations better with similar results as the best phone cameras. Now we know megapixels don't really matter, and the iPhone's eight megapixel camera has been one of the best. So here's the breakdown. In our camera test, both cameras can take 1080p video, and both cameras took great pictures, but the difference is that specifically in low light situations, the HTC One excelled with more image detail and handled dark conditions better compared to the iPhone 5 in our examples. But then, in normal daylight situations, 
the iPhone had an advantage with slightly sharper and more saturated images compared to the HTC One that still took great pictures, but they were a little duller with color temperature pretty much being the same for both. Now the other advantage the HTC One has is a more extensive camera that can take pictures with different filters and really extensive editing features for retouching people's faces, different effects, transforming the images in different ways, and then the ability to remove objects from a picture with their Zoe feature. That is crazy. Now the ecosystems are extensive and Google Play has done a great job of catching up as a legit option and movies look and sound amazing on the HTC One. But we also know Apple still has the advantage for more exclusive content on iTunes and apps that come out on the platform first. Now the HTC One has really raised the bar with what a camera can do, but a lot of people would still rather take the best camera overall. This one's a toughie, but the HTC One gets a five and the iPhone 5 gets a 4.7. So after averaging four rounds, the HTC One still leads, but by a smaller margin. The final round that decides it all is performance. Both phones are snappy performers, and we always tell you the same disclaimer that your call quality will vary on your carrier and location, but from our testing, both phones sounded great. Now battery life is going to be different for everyone, but the HTC One has a power saver mode that's handy to turn off functions to save you juice over time. Now in our battery video drain test, both phones were close to 10 hours of juice, and that's pretty much a push. These two are great performing phones, but we're handing out 4.7 points to each phone because there's still better performing ones out there. So let's average out all five rounds, and in a prize fight where the HTC One jumped out early on Apple, it stayed on top with three perfect rounds, taking this battle 4.8 to 4.5, and is your prize fight winner. The smartphone world is only getting more competitive, and we'll find out how Samsung, Apple, Google, and others step up their game with their next flagship phones. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another prize fight. Woo